My name is Leslie Pitts, and I am a nurse practitioner at UAB um, Division of Pediatric Endocrinology. Dr. Mick and I work together um, with the Alabama Department of Public Health to make sure that uh, the babies in Alabama that are born with congenital hypothyroidism and congenital adrenal hyperplasia are diagnosed quickly and treated as quickly as possible. Um, so in our state, we have about 35 to 40 babies each year that are born with congenital hypothyroidism, which is one of the more common diagnoses that we see um, identified through newborn screening. Um, as we heard earlier, congenital hypothyroidism is um, a, an inability of the body to make thyroid hormone, which we know is incredibly important for not only growth but cognitive development. Um, one of the other uh, endocrine diseases that is screened through newborn screening is congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And though this diagnosis is a little bit more rare, uh, it is a very serious condition. In Alabama, we diagnose about four to five babies each year with CAH. And today we're going to get to hear the story of one of those families. Um, the baby is Elijah Jeffers, who was diagnosed in 2014 with CAH at 15 days of age. So I'm just going to talk for just a minute about CAH. Um, it is a recessively inherited disease, um, like many of the conditions we've heard about today. Um, and it prevents the adrenal glands from producing two hormones, aldosterone and cortisol, which are essential for life. Um, aldosterone is the primary hormone that is responsible for maintaining the salt, potassium, and water balance. And cortisol is in charge of maintaining blood sugar and blood pressure during times of high physical stress. So in CAH, there is an absence of an essential enzyme called 21-hydroxylase that is in the production pathway of aldosterone and cortisol. And that blockade um, from the absence of that enzyme creates a spillover of precursor hormones into um, the androgens, which are uh, masculinizing steroid hormones. And so due to this kind of spillover into androgens, um, females that have CAH have um, often will present at birth with either excessive masculinization or you may notice um, ambiguous genitalia. So they're really pretty easy to pick up on. But boys that are born with this condition, even with the very severe form, may have no signs at all that they have it. Um, and so if it's not screened for in the neonatal period, um, a boy with severe CAH would present between one and four weeks of age, and they would have severe failure to thrive, um, recurrent vomiting, dehydration, um, low blood pressure, low sodium, high potassium, and even shock. And some of these symptoms, though they may sound severe, can early on be pretty vague. And so if these symptoms are um, either unrecognized or misdiagnosed, the delay in treatment with steroids can lead to cardiopulmonary arrest and death. So CAH, like some of the other conditions we've heard of, is it's not a straightforward condition. It exists on a spectrum from a carrier state up to the most severe form, which is classical salt-wasting CAH. And so sometimes the presentation can be anything from no symptoms at all to adrenal crisis. And increasingly, with um, advances in newborn screening, we are now um, starting to pick up more and more of the less severe but clinically significant forms of CAH that otherwise would have gone undiagnosed until later in life. But luckily, CAH is treatable, and even babies that have classical CAH um, have a good prognosis with treatment and monitoring. The treatment um, for classical CAH is not very simple, but it is effective. Um, the babies are required to take three medications, often multiple times a day. The hydrocortisone replaces cortisol, fludrocortisone to replace the aldosterone, and then they take sodium chloride uh, to replace the large amounts of sodium that are lost in the urine. The hydrocortisone replacement is often the most complicated. Um, babies will have to take a maintenance dose of hydrocortisone three to four times a day. But in times of illness or severe physical stress, they'll have to increase this dose to three times normal, two to three times normal, to increase um, 
the cortisol because the body needs more cortisol during those times. In addition, families have to always have an emergency injection on hand of solucortef, um, just in the event of severe illness or unconsciousness. And because of this, um, we you know, ask that families that have babies with this condition have a medical alert um, stating that they have adrenal insufficiency. So the treatment for CAH is lifelong, um, and it has to be maintained within a delicate balance. So frequent lab monitoring is essential for these babies. Um, and there's often a great deal of education that goes into this diagnosis, both at the onset and throughout treatment. Families have to be taught about signs and symptoms of adrenal crisis, the disease process, how to give the medicines, how to give the injections. And often families are just very overwhelmed at the beginning, um, and so they seek out help and support from online communities. Um, one of the ones we refer to is the CARES Foundation website, which has been really great for education and support for these families. Um, so in conclusion, CH is um, it's a long-term diagnosis. It lasts lifelong, but the prognosis is overall a good one. There are some complications that we do see, like early puberty, short stature, hypertension, and um, infertility is possible. But most patients that um, get consistent treatment and monitoring are able to lead normal and healthy lives. And today I'm going to um, talk to you about uh, Elijah Jeffers. Um, his mom, Nicole, is here to talk with us today. And her son, Elijah, was diagnosed with classical salt-wasting CAH at 15 days of age. Um, if you recall, he was born in 2014, uh, around the time of the big snowstorm. <laughs> so there were um, a few delays in getting his diagnosis. So he was, um, his newborn screen was actually collected at two days of age. Um, it resulted uh, with a level of 134, uh, where our normal range is less than 45. Um, he was born uh, healthy, full-term baby, uh, has three older sisters that are also healthy, and uh, there was no family history of any endocrine problem before he was born. Um, after his abnormal newborn screen results, Elijah was sent by his pediatrician to the ER at Children's. Um, at the time, he had started to show some symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. His mom noticed that he wasn't eating very well and just didn't seem like he had much energy. And once he got to the ER at Children's, he had, was noted to have a very low potassium or sodium and, and high potassium. And so that is where um, Elijah's story begins. And his mom, Nicole, he is here today to talk to us about their journey from newborn screening through today and their experiences since diagnosis. Thank you. Hey, I'm so excited to get to talk to you guys today. That was extremely overwhelming. Um, we have only known about CAH for the 20 months that we've had our son. We um, have our three daughters who were born completely healthy, and of course they all had their newborn screens, and we think nothing of it. You know, they come in, they prick the heel, they do it again when they're a few days, a few weeks old. It's never been a big deal, even with prenatal testing. You know, they come in, do you want to do this? Sure, take some blood, we don't really care. You know, our children don't have anything. Nothing runs in our family. You don't think anything about it. We never thought there would be any significance of those tests whatsoever. And in reality, it changed our entire lives. Um, our son was born very healthy. All our girls were right at seven pounds. So when this whopping nine pound chunk walked in, <laughs> he, was, he was a huge surprise to us. We thought there has never been a healthier boy born. So when we were in lockdown for three days at Brookwood Hospital, watching the car slide down 31, um, we got to know him and there was, there was some initial concerns. He was a less than consolable baby. Um, I have. He was my fourth. Um, my profession before children's, I was a nanny. Um, if anyone could console a baby, it would be me. But we chalked it up to he was having some trouble feeding, so we switched to formula and gave him everything I could, and we continued that pattern after we went home. And he continued to lose weight. Um, we went back, of course, at two days. He'd lost a little bit more, no worry. 
his Billy Rubin looked like it was going to level out. And so she said, he'll be fine. So I took him back home, called the doctor. Something's not right. He's eating copiously. She's like, no, no, he's just hungry now. You know, he was a nine-pound baby. He's going to make up time. I'm like, no, something seems really unusual about him. You know, he's really, really drinking. Like, I can't make enough. I am giving him everything I make plus formula, and he pees. He pees constantly. Little did we know he was exhausting his sodium stores at a remarkable rate. Um, at a week, I could not break the feeling that there was something wrong with my baby, so I took him back. I said, he's yellow. He's just a nasty color. There's something not right. And she said, I agree. Let's redraw, let's redraw the billy, even though it looked like it was going to plateau. Maybe you were wrong. And so, nope, Mom. It's just the lighting. You can take him home. He's, he's going to level out. He's looking good. And I just stared. I said, no, there's something wrong. But there's just a point where I, as a mom, have a feeling, and I have no medical background. And there's a point where a doctor has the questions and the things they look for and the things they can objectively check. And that's what they can do. And there's got to be something to bridge that gap. And she had done everything she could. And we didn't realize how delayed that newborn screen was going to be. And so I took this baby home. And two days later, the newborn screen was positive in Montgomery. We didn't have it. And so I spent a solid week at home dealing with a child that more progressively was so sleepy he couldn't wait to feed. And he had diarrhea. I was going through a pack of diapers a day easy. I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know what the deal was. I'd call the doctor. No, Nicole, the levels were good. You've just got to relax. You've just got to relax. I'm like, I, I really, I'm sure there's something wrong. She said, you've just got to take it easy. He's going to be great. you just got to really believe. I'm like, okay, he's not good. So the day before his two-week visit, I get a call at 8.45 p.m., and it's his pediatrician. And I'm like, this was not the doctor's office number. What is this? She says, Nicole. Hey, how does Elijah look? It's 8.45 at night. I haven't slept in days. I've been constantly feeding this kid. My attitude's not really doing good. He looks like he looked the last time I brought him to your office. Is he, does he have watery-looking eyes? Not really. Was he still peeing and pooping? Constantly. Was he waking good? Not really. I mean, you know, what do you want? She said, Nicole, we might have missed something. His newborn screen came back, and it shows CAH. What in the heck is that? No one in my family has this. I don't know what you're talking about. We discussed, we decided the next morning. She said, my office opens at 8. Be there at 745. My nurses will be waiting for you, and we'll make a decision then on what to do. Okay, so what does every mom do? We hang up the phone and we check Google. <laughs> so I break out that phone, and I start Googling, and I'm like, oh, dear Lord, he has this. He has this, and I'm staring at this baby, and I'm bawling, and I'm like, honey, he has this. This is what is happening to our son. This is, this is it. You know, remember the joke when he was born, and I said, whoop, it's a boy. Uh-huh, it's a boy. He, he has too much testosterone. That's what happened to our son. I'm not kidding here. It was like the lights went off. I'm not crazy. Oh, <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> we found it. It was almost a relief. And then you start reading and you realize this is more complicated than any mind can hold at once. So that night we went to sleep, only knowing that the next day was going to be hard and not really knowing what it held. But I'm so thankful it held a lot because it meant that I got to keep my son. That screen gave us a future. We got to the doctor's office and it was obvious. They weighed him and the color drained out of my face the constant effort to feed this child, and he had done nothing but lose weight. The, the energy I had poured into just guaranteeing that he would, he would just hold level and be okay to make it to that next appointment. He was dying in front of me, and I knew it. I had known it all along. There was something wrong with my son, and she said, it's okay, we're gonna help you, and we're sorry. Go to Children's, they'll be waiting. So I got to meet my next group of skeptics. The nurses were like, and why are you here? Well, he looks okay to us. But, but that changed. They drew some electrolytes, and I got three nurses, multiple syringes, two doctors. No one, we'll talk to you in just a minute. We've got to get some fluids in this baby. 
From that point forward, we have been able to get him the help he needs. He takes steroids several times a day. We check blood pressure several times a day. But if you saw him, you would think, well, he's definitely on steroids. He could take down a room in no time. He is <laughs> a thousand times the energy. He is a full-blown boy. He is happy to be here. And if you wanted to check his blood sugar, he'd do this. I mean, he's, he's done his time in the hospital, and he understands. And he does pretty well with his blood draws. And he, one day he will fully understand why. Right now he doesn't really question. It's just his life. But... God saved my little boy's life, and he used this newborn screen. And it's hard to believe that a few years difference and that, that screen wouldn't have been here. And so it's, we're so thankful for this screen and for everything. It's, it's a gift. Thank you.